Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Monday, the 20th of May. All right, now, just as we come through uh, into the start of the Asian session here, you can see um, Australia and New Zealand already sort of kicked things off. Now, there has been a, a few little uh, surprises to uh, start with, and if I just whip you over to the charts, you'll, you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now, with the... Um, the majors right now there's a, there's a number of things out over the weekend and from friday which we have to really wait and digest to see what's going on the aussie and uh, the kiwi uh the two major pairs impacted by the u.s china trade um issues um now trump's come out actually on the weekend friday he was talking about adding massive trade restrictions to huawei the Chinese uh, telecommunication company now over the weekend he's come out and said they may be scaling back those um trade restrictions now that's it's hard to see what um that's obviously it would have a positive impact on the aussie but don't forget the uh australia had the national elections on the weekend the incumbent uh, liberal party won that so and they weren't expected to so the aussies jumped on a bit of a culmination of uh different events so that's a pretty decent move the aussie closed around 68 65 and it opened up around 69 sort of 25 right so um you know, once again, you know, why have positions open over the weekend when you open yourself to all this risk? The Kiwi, pretty much following uh, its Antipodean uh, stepbrother as such, uh, or cousin. So that those two pairs are the ones to be focusing on. You can see the, um, now there's also talk about these US-China issues being pushed back about six months to give the US a chance to come back and, and discuss trade um, uh, deals or talks with the EU and Japan. So let's hope that doesn't happen. I mean, I don't want to see this thing drag on longer than it needs to, although Trump would love this. It, it's sort of, it's one of those ongoing distractions that he can keep going back to uh, to cover up any other weird things he's doing. Now, dollar yen, a little bit higher. To me, it's the safe haven trade unwinding. Uh, Euro, uh, we had slightly better inflation numbers on Friday, the final numbers. But this uh, pair, I mean, it's just sort of slowly pops above the resistance levels, our previous high last week. Now we're sort of just below the short-term uh, support. I can't really see it going too far, although this is where the big thing comes in, and it's going to be a geopolitical issue later in the week. The Euro European parliamentary elections are coming up. The Italians have already come out and said, you know, we want um, the EU budget rules relaxed. It's going to create a bit of negative sentiment as we come into these uh um, parliamentary elections for the EU uh, this later this week. I think it's Thursday, Friday. So pay close attention to that. Sterling, Sterling's drifting lower. The, the, once again, the Brexit talks have broken down and now they're sort of factoring in the impact of Theresa May, the current UK PM, stepping down. This thing's just um, wherever, basically. I mean, you can always... I've been playing a few, few um, opportunities to get long on a break. But the, the, the damn thing is so unpredictable and random, it's uh, pretty hard to, to get a grasp of what's going on. Dollar CAD, you can't see it here. It's, for some reason, it hasn't updated. Oil is, uh, as you can see, has rallied back to 63 bucks. Dollar CAD just trading sideways at the moment. So when you come back and bring this into the equation of what we've got at the moment and trying to combine the technicals with the fundamentals, it's uh, still a little bit of a grey picture here now. The... Um, the key part is the dollar yen move and uh, dollar Swiss. Well, you know what? Strong US numbers over the weekend have really nullified the down move on the safe havens. So those trades will be updated to be sideways. We still have the um, the other core pairs, you know, Sterling, uh, Aussie and Euro still moving to the downside with Aussie and Kiwi still the two standout pairs with um Weak fundamentals and obviously weak technicals. So keep an eye on that. Monday open, like we've got gaps in the currencies. Anytime you see gaps in the currencies, and I've heard a lot of um, very strange people saying, oh, I trade the gaps and I, you know, if there's a gap, I just go the other way. Well, there's no rhyme or reason to that. Now, with the current gaps I can see here today, particularly on the Aussie and Kiwi, I think they will be short-lived because the overall fundamental picture here is down. And the core market drivers, this US-China issue, um, still unresolved, should add some uh, downward pressure on the Aussie and Kiwi. Although, this is where you've got to factor in, like the weekend comments from Trump saying that they may be scaling back the, um, 
the trade restrictions on Huawei, right, the, US, the Chinese tele, telco, um, that's a bit of a positive as well. So the market is definitely going to be sitting short those pairs and for good reason, right? They are the pairs with the central banks leaning on those as well. Now, upcoming events for, uh, for Monday, well, the uh, Japanese GDP numbers out uh, first thing now. It's very rare, unless the Japanese market is the focus for the market, and what you need for that to happen is no geopolitical events anywhere else, then they usually come back and focus on Japan. These numbers will be inconsequential. I don't see it moving the market at all. We've got the uh, weekly traders meeting for those traders uh, who've come through the complete package and also the, the workshop attendees. And don't forget, we've got uh, Fed Chairman Powell speaking um, as well later or during that North American session. So... We get a few things to look into as we get things started, but what you really want to do is is take some time and wait, see how this technical picture settles after the Asian session, European and North American sessions. We'll start to see where these um, pairs start to settle in after the weekend news, right? There's a few events here which are impacting the Aussie and Kiwi. And as I said, the dollar yen and dollar Swiss now moving back into a sideways moving stance as we wait for the next leg of, uh, of direction. Those US numbers, just to come back to that on Friday, were stronger, the, the University of Michigan consumer sentiment numbers stronger, and the housing start numbers also stronger. So, you know what, US consumer sentiment is, is at 15 year high. So there's no reason why we can't see the US dollar go higher, except the Donald has got his foot on the damn thing, trying to hold it down uh, with a whole range of trade issues. Now he's, Obviously, you've got a major issue with China, but he has, he has signaled he's looking at Japan, looking at the EU. He's doing a bit of a deal with uh, Canada and Mexico, trying to get that, uh, uh, that, that new deal going. I don't, know, don't even know what they're going to call it this time, but they uh, are looking to sort of solidify some deals, make sure um, they've got something on the table for uh, the US companies. All right, guys, that's it from me. The... Um, there's a fair bit to play for this week. If you scroll down through the MyFX Trading Hub, you get a full range of, of the key uh, data releases this week. Um, you come into uh, sort of like Wednesday's trading and you've got a whole range of stuff and then you get through that. After the FOMC meeting minutes, uh, we've got a whole heap of data. Basically, you can trade right through. So it's going to be interesting to see how the momentum comes out come Tuesday, come Wednesday. Then we can start to really see where these currencies are going. All right, guys, that's it from me. We'll uh, catch you in the 247 Trade Zone. Have a great trade week. Cheerio.